Now let us see how ICTs can be profitably used for evaluation or assessment purpose. Generally we do assessment in a classroom using paper and pencil test. It also can be done through oral examination, it can be done for practical examination, but it is in the physical world. Can we use virtual world tools which are virtually available for assessment and evaluation? How ICTs can support, facilitate the process of learning? That is the question which we want to address. There are many trends in the field of evaluation. For example, if you want to use learning centric attitude, then you can propose many new things in evaluation. One such thing is on demand examination. Whenever the learner is ready for evaluation, he or she can tell you that I am ready now. Now you conduct my exam. It is not possible administratively because it creates a challenge to a teacher or administrator to organize examination for every student whenever he or she is ready. But if you use ICTs, it is possible. We will see how it is possible. So on demand examination can be one such area where ICTs can be used. There are new trends like portfolios, rubrics and many other tools are available for comprehensive evaluation of a learner. So comprehensive evaluation can be addressed. Continuous internal assessment can be addressed by using ICT tools. And how we can address them? There are tools like question bank which would help us to address some of these issues. Let us see them in detail. On demand examinations are used for the students. Student demand that, that I have completed 90 days of studying, now evaluate me. Now they can be given a center of examination where they can go and a paper can be generated. How a paper can be generated? If you have a question bank ready and the paper is generated on a particular course of 4 credits. When the question bank is ready, there are questions already framed on the content using different objectives, using different types of questions and there is a pool of questions. Now if you have a blueprint for evaluating that particular course that on this content so many questions, on this content so many questions, so many types of questions, so much of marks should be given. So if this blueprint is ready, that blueprint can be given to question bank and that question bank software generates a new question paper on the spot. This generated paper can be given to the learner and the learner solves that which can be checked. This is called on demand examination. This is possible because question bank software can generate any number of questions based on the blueprint which you give and the conditions which you put. If you put a condition that questions which were asked last year should not be asked now or this question should not be asked. If you put that condition, question bank software can take care of that and generate as many question papers you like. Otherwise it is physically for a teacher not possible to generate 100 different question papers as per the demand of the students. Many universities or schools which are offering programs through distance mode, they use this because they are distance learners. For them it is challenging to come at a particular point of time at a particular place. So for them on demand examination becomes a very good tool. We also said that there are many other tools which have come into practice now because of ICT. Some of these are mentioned in this slide. One is portfolio, other can be rubrics, one more can be concept maps and there are many others. Concept maps as you can see that concepts are connected with each other, shown their relationship. Now there are tools for concept map, online tools are available for concept map. You give say 20 concepts to students and ask them to connect them. This shows you as a teacher you can see that whether that conceptualization is done properly or not. The concepts are related maybe in a uh, cause and effect relationship, maybe in association, may be shown as supra concept and sub concepts. What kind of relationship exists between concepts that must be shown properly by the students. This is possible if they create concepts using concept map software, the teacher can evaluate that and see the understanding of the student. Rubrics is a two dimensional tool which gives us a comprehensive idea about students understanding. You have seen checklist or a rating scale where we use only one dimension. We give the statements and we rate them 
only on one aspect. Either it is many times, sometimes, never or whatever. So, a rating is created. Here in rubrics, we create two dimensional aspects of any particular thing and every aspect is scored. Then a total score is taken which gives you an idea about various sub concepts and also the level of understanding. Let us take one example, this is about Bloom's taxonomy. For teacher training, this is one of the important concept. Bloom's taxonomy refers to the hierarchy of objectives. It also tells you how the objectives can be stated. Now we want to see whether the students have understood this concept or not. One way is to ask them a question directly, which objectives are there? How do we write the objective statement? Here what we are doing, we gave them some kind of assignments to do and now we are evaluating them comprehensively for their work. You see here that it is a two dimensional thing. On the vertical side, we have five aspects. One is concept of each domain. We are talking about three domains, cognitive, affective and psychomotor. We want to know whether the domain concept is understood by the student or not. Accuracy is another aspect. Organization, use of appropriate action verb, because that is one important aspect of writing objectives to have action verbs in the statements and also differentiation of each domain. When the learner is writing objectives, the teacher is evaluating them. These are the aspects on which you will evaluate them, but on horizontal level, we have taken three different levels. And what are those levels? One is meets the standard, other is partially meets the standard and third is does not meet the standard. And for every level, we are giving marks. If it is meeting the standard, 3 marks, not meeting the standard, 1 mark. So, this is a continuum. Now, you are writing for every cell what is expected of the person to meet the standard. So, every cell, the expectations of the teachers are written and that is why the evaluation becomes more objective and not subjective because we are using these criteria which are written in that particular cell to give the score. Now, either you give 3, 2 or 1 and for all these 5 criteria, there is a score in the last column. Total score will help you to evaluate that person in a most comprehensive manner. These rubrics can be designed, developed by the teacher himself or herself or ready-made rubrics also can be used. But generally, our way of teaching, our objectives, our content, if it differs, the teacher can generate his or her own rubrics. Portfolio is another tool which is used for evaluation. We know that generally the students of art and painting use their portfolio. They use big portfolios wherein they have their own paintings, pictures and whatever they have designed and developed. They carry that big portfolio. Portfolio is a comprehensive file or a document in which there are several things accommodated. Now we are talking about e-portfolio. This tool is a comprehensive tool because it takes cognizance of all the evaluation assignments prepared by the student. Suppose it is a two year program, that is a four semester program and in the fourth semester if the student is preparing a portfolio, she or he can take care of all the artifacts, all the assignments prepared by that student. Those assignments can be more than 100. We do not want to involve, take, include everything in the portfolio. What are the best things which the student has done? So, it is a portfolio which is designed and developed by the student. So, student is free to select the best assignments, best artifacts the student likes to select because this portfolio is for comprehensive evaluation by the teacher as well as by the employer. So, naturally the student would like to see the best thing the student has done in a two years time or one year time or whatever time period he or she is selecting. Portfolio is not all about artifacts. It is not only collection of artifacts, it has many other aspects. One thing you can have your resume also, you can have your personal information if you want to give, but more important is reflection. Portfolio 
is a tool where you have your artifacts, but people are interested to understand what is the process through which you went. How do you learn? How do you acquire knowledge? What are the best ways which you use? What is your learning style? So reflections, how do I learn? What I learned is one thing and how do I learn is another thing. Did I enjoy learning? In this whole process, there were challenges. How did I address those challenges? All these things come into reflections. 